I remember in my first call something I learned that was very important for the rest of my life, and it was from a widow, a woman, at the end of the funeral service for her beloved husband. And she said these words. She said, through tears of joy, she said, Pastor, I wonder if you know what it felt like to hear my husband's name 37 times in this funeral. I loved it. His name is precious to me. And my good friends, they mean so well, but they're afraid to say it. They think I'll fall apart. And she looked at me for a moment through glistening tears and she said, my arm hasn't fallen off yet. I haven't lost my leg because those people named his name. Hallelujah, she said at the end of a funeral. She counted the, the number of times his name was written in the bulletin and the number of times it was used in the liturgy and the number of times I spoke it in the sermon. And she said, it was joy. The name of the ones that we love so much are gold. They're precious. They need to be spoken, not only by the one that's bereaved, and that's part of grief work, but by her friends, by his friends. And you know this is true at one level. And you just have to think very, very, uh, in a very short time backward to think about ones you've lost, how precious their name is, and how you can say that in your own mind over and over again, but how much more powerful it is when someone else says it. I remember Herbert. <gasps> Herbert was so funny. And I remember the time he was so endearing. Herbert was my best friend too. Herbert. Herbert, Herbert, Herbert. Pain and anger and hurt and sorrow, they're actually a natural part of life, whether we like it or not. It's a both and project that God has made. And we might have wanted something different, but this is the life we have. And as you grow older, as you have more experiences of both pain, anger, sadness, and joy, you begin to recognize that. And it's not wrong to be angry at God. You, there's all kinds of passages in the scripture. It, it defines the fact that you have a relationship with God. Who argues with someone they don't believe in? You can have anger. But as someone said this morning on the way out, I like the homily today, but I also think anger is okay. And she's right. St. James said, be angry but sin not. There's a difference. Feelings come and go. They just happen to us. It, grief is the work we do with those feelings. And that's why it can be called good grief. It's what I named this service tonight. Grief is working out those feelings in a way that's helpful for the whole world. That's our project given to us by Christ. To take our hurt Share it with our friends instead of just ourselves. Share some great stories. Get it out in the open. Let other people give their stories. And soon you become healed. And then you take that experience. You take your sorrow, your anger, and now your joy at friendship. And spread that to someone else. But it's not wrong to feel sad. Being sad means you're fully human. And that's what God wants for us. To be able to have our hearts broken means love is working. There are other disappointments too. A marriage that didn't work out. Words that you regret having said. Sometimes you take them back and get forgiven. Sometimes you're still not ready to do that. And that festers. Disappointments. Children who have been estranged the job that didn't work out, the person you thought was your friend that just abandoned you years ago, and neither one of you have had the courage yet to come together. You're human. That's what that means. It's okay. 
But take that sorrow, that hurt, that anger, that bitterness, as you're doing in this liturgy, bringing it to God, and then bring it to at least one other person. Have a confidant. Have a confessor. Have someone you can say this to out loud because it becomes more real in your own heart when you can do that. And then let the light of Christ flood through you, strengthen you, pick you up again, and bring you into a new day. And here's something else. There's a reason why the cross is the central symbol of Christian churches. It's there when you walk in. It's there hugely here. I don't know how to say this, but there is a mystical power of simply gazing at the cross, the symbol that says there is no place so dark, so hurting, so awful, that God is not willing to enter into it and absorb the hurt and the evil into God's self. And for that, we can give thanks tonight. So, in this evening prayer, a realistic, honest, and joyful Christmas to all of you. I love being one of your pastors here. Talk to me anytime. Amen.